Hey Legends, Blake here with another video and for today's video I've got 9 options for a 125 gallon tank or above. You might be thinking why would I have that? Well that's because for the past couple of weeks I've been setting up this 8x2x2 aquarium that I got for free. I've been building a stand for it, plumbing it all up and getting it ready for fish and as you can imagine the entire time thinking about everything that I could put in it. So for today's video let me run you through all my ideas and let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so stocking idea number one, hopefully there's a graphic there, uh, would be a South American or Central American cichlid tank. Now, I'm not talking about the Thunderdome that is usually what happens where you'll get maybe, um, you know, a green terror, a red terror, a red devil, an Oscar, a Jaguar, and a Jack Dempsey. Throw them all in there, maybe with a couple of convicts and hope for the best. Usually, if I was going to do something like that, I'd prefer to do it species only, where I'd have four or five Oscars, and it'd be an awesome time. Obviously, if you're going to have that many, it would probably have to be north of a 125, but you could easily have three Oscars in a 125, no problem at all. I do already have four full-grown Oscars, and I could move those guys in, but we do have a bunch of other ideas to consider as well. The second idea that I had was really popular as well in the poll that I did recently. If you didn't catch the poll, make sure that you hit subscribe down below so you can keep an eye out for future community posts and polls. But the next one was the rainbow fish planted tank. Now, I love rainbow fish and I love planted tanks, so this does have appeal to me. I'd probably end up putting some Bozeman eye rainbows in there, some turquoise, maybe some praycocks. I wouldn't be looking to breed because I'd want a couple of different species and there is always a risk of interbreeding when it, when it comes down to rainbow fish but you can get a huge amount of color. I could pick any rainbow fish on the spectrum, even the larger ones and it would be a, a really fantastic tank full of activity and color and all those sorts of things. So I think that's definitely an option that I'm really considering. It wouldn't have to be exclusively rainbow fish and as with any of these ideas I'd probably also include things like bristlenose, maybe some loaches, maybe some Siamese algae eaters, autosynclus and other things like that just to keep the activity uh, along the bottom of the aquarium as well as in the mid and top water. As for the next one I think this is, could be a really cool tank but it would take a lot of patience, time and money to pull it off and I think the oddball tank could be really awesome. Just imagine the full size of the eight foot aquarium and you've got maybe uh, two or three uh, tiger bashirs in there, the Enlicari, Enlicari. Maybe you've got a couple of freshwater moray eels in there. Maybe some fully grown black ghost knives, maybe a datnoid or something like that. Just really weird and quirky fish. Maybe a short finned eel as well. I think that you could do some really weird sort of things with this uh, huge tank and it's definitely a consideration I'm having. Um, mixed machines as well would be cool and you could even put a couple of the really unique full grown plecos like a royal pleco or a blue or green dragon pleco something like that could be really cool as well. Next up I do think that aquariums with between the six to eight foot uh, width do really call for the temptation to include an African cichlid aquarium. Now it's been a while since I shut down my Mbuna tank, but I think a tank like this could look really cool, full of Texas Holy Rock, maybe with some OB peacocks, some other peacocks, some haps, and it could just be a really nice, extremely active tank with again, you know, almost salt water levels of color. The downside is of course, we wouldn't be able to have any plants with that, and for the most part, they'd be all males. So we wouldn't be looking to do any breeding either, which for me, it kind of turns me off the idea a little bit because it's such an investment in fish room footprint that uh, I don't know. I think it would be really cool, but perhaps not for me. The next idea I had, and again, it was really seconded on the poll that I did. I thought it would be awesome to do sort of the ultimate nano tank where you have an eight foot space, however, you just fill it full of tetras and rasboras, corydoras and even cherry shrimp. I think it would be really, really cool to um, sort of maximize the scale, but 
The downside to that, I've been thinking about it a lot and, and don't get me wrong, I'm super tempted to do it. But the first thing is, is that the expense of all of the fish would add up really, really quickly. And also I'm a bit worried because on this aquarium, I have an overflow which will lead to a sump. And I think for the most part, the fish would get into that overflow and the sump and end up being a bit of a disaster. So for that reason, I'm going to avoid it on this occasion. But if you had a 125 at home and you had maybe a canister filter on that, it would be really, really cool to see it full of uh, Julii or stir by Corys, uh, all sorts of different cherry shrimp. I wouldn't worry about picking a certain color because eventually in a tank like this, it's going to be too hard to sort of color that color um, to make it consistent. So you have to accept that over time, they will sort of turn those wild type colors. You could put some bamboo shrimp in there or wood shrimp. That would be really cool as well. And uh, I'd just go with some small fish like uh, maybe Cardinal Tetras are obviously a staple. Rummy nose Tetras would look really great in a massive school. Lemon Tetras are one that I think are really underrated as well, but the options are absolutely endless and uh, I'd really love to do a fully um, high tech, eight foot Dutch style aquarium with all of these nano fish, but uh, maybe on the next one. The next idea I had was perhaps the Live Bearer Factory. Now I think it would be cool to have maybe one of the larger species of live bear, maybe something like a Montezuma sword tail and just let them produce to their will. Obviously you would have to do a little bit of management of the lines because if you are churning out real quantity, like I imagine would happen in a tank this size, uh, you are going to run into genetic defects like bent spines and things like that. But I think that that would be amazing. Um, a certain species of guppy perhaps would be good. Platys, of course, would be fantastic, or even a type of goodyard, perhaps, for something a little bit more unique as well. Either way, I think that live bearers would be a great option for a tank this size because they naturally keep algae down, especially through their grazing activity. They, of, of course, are super peaceful, super full of color, and they're gonna breed. So I think that's pretty awesome. But again, I do think that in my instance, the fry would head down the overflow into the sump and towards the uh, pump. So I don't think that's a good idea just this, at, at this point in time. The next thing I was thinking was a barb aquarium. I think a barb aquarium would look really cool in a, um, uh, a footprint this size. Imagine Odessa barbs, ruby barbs, Denison barbs, and maybe some mascara barbs for that real extra pop of size and color. Of course, you'd have some of the larger loaches, I think, at the bottom, maybe a whole bunch of yo-yo loaches or clown loaches. And I think that that tank would be awesome. Absolutely full of different colors and textures. All of those fish are super fast and, and torpedo-like and would be swimming back and forth in a nice uh, shoal. So I think that could be definitely an option that I'm really considering. You could plant it out perfectly, make it really dense and lush. And the, all of those fish are big enough that I don't think the outflow would be as big of a risk. Over time, with a footprint that size, and especially if it was densely planted, we might even see some natural survival, some natural hatching of barb eggs and things like that, which would be awesome to see as well. So this is an idea that I'm really leaning towards for my case in particular. Next up, I think another great option would be, again, a cichlid tank, but in this instance, maybe a more peaceful cichlid aquarium. So things like geophagus paired with some severums, perhaps. I particularly like rockkill severums, and I, well, there's not too many geos that I don't like, but I really like the orange head tapaho or the ultrafrons. If you can find them, there's a huge amount of geos out there and uh, severums as well. There's green severum, gold severums, and there's, there's heaps of options available. So um, that is an option that I'd really like as well. But with geos, I'd really want to keep them on sand. And with the severums, I think they'd go ahead and eat any plants that I did put in there. So I think those two things for me are going to mean that they're not necessarily on my list or they might be on yours. And the last idea that I've been thinking about lately and one that I'm really tempted on is the full um, sort of underwater snapshot of Lake Tanganyika. I think it would be really, really cool to have 
a section of the aquarium scattered with small shells and have some form of shell dweller in there, whether that's a gold oscillatus or a multi fasciitis. And then you'd lead that into a rocky outcrop where you'd have a, a species of Julitochromis, whether that is Dick Feldy, Transcriptus, or any of the others uh, that are out there. And then you might have a, a, a area of open water where you might include some featherfin cichlids, the fursifer, a really awesome cichlid that does get a bit of size on it. And since all these three naturally uh, occur in Lake Tanganyika anyway, it's not unusual that they would come into contact with each other. So I think the behavior would be really, really cool to watch. However, obviously this would mean that there'd be no plants and um, we'd be looking at sort of a sand substrate um, and quite a few rocks, I guess, to be honest. I think before this tank is closed down, I will eventually do this as one of its iterations before, um, before I'm done with it. So there you go, guys. That is nine ideas. I hope are unique and uh, inspirational if you've got yourself a 125 gallon tank or above first of all congratulations and really enjoy it and uh, you can't really go wrong with a profile that size the options are basically endless and the only thing that i'd say is if you're not enjoying it don't be afraid to mix it up uh, so hopefully this video helped you if if it did let me know down below with a like and a subscribe and other than that, i'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching